through the carbonate, that's how I got free. Jump it back off because there's no stopping me. Postmodern player, sample tastic, flows ekphrastic. I get drastic, hey, watch the plastic. Yo, I name check and leave. Welcome to the MacGuffin, episode 266. I'm Spencer. I'm Greg. Today we're going to give you our DVD rundown for the week of July 16th. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Some DVDs coming out this yes. week. We're going to run them down for Look you. Look at that. Yeehaw. Breaking it down, yeah. Spencer. Breaking it down. <laughs> Breaking it down. <laughs> Running it down. Running it down. <laughs> uh, a good a good chunk of stuff. Some old, some new, some TV, some film. You yep. know, covering all the bases. Yeah, nice variety. Yeah, nice variety. Some with uh, a lot of special features, some with minimal special yeah. features. <laughs> the first one I'm going to talk about, though, is a film that came out, jeez, it feels like just, what, three months ago yeah. that it came out, 42. Mm -hmm. The story of Jackie Robinson, starring, yes. you know, Harrison Ford, Chadwick Boseman. Um, you know, I, arguably the most important athlete ever. I mean... Yeah, it's kind of hard to, you know, not many times do you get an athlete that ties up social events or social his and civil rights history All with in one sports. For, yeah. you know, it's one of the few times that sports has also been, I guess, more progressive than the rest of the country. Which is strange to think of. Yeah, now they've fallen way behind <laughs> with, like, yeah. you know, homophobia and whatnot. But yes. we digress. That's all a discussion of itself. Yes. In terms of um, the movie, you know, it's, it's an enjoyable film, decent story. I felt like Harrison Ford was distracting. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's a, it's a very... Very important story. I think it was see. Harrison Ford's first time playing a real life individual in film. Really, Harrison, uh, Indiana Jones was not real. Uh, no, surprisingly, surprisingly <laughs> fictitious character, Spencer. <laughs> yeah. I know, I know. Yeah. amazing, right? Yeah. This is the kind of things you learn here on the MacGuffin. That's you learn that Indiana yeah. Jones was fictitious. Yeah. Han Solo, though, totally, totally real. real. Yeah. yeah, but in the future, so it doesn't count yet. You can't playing real people from the future. It's not considered. Well, it's a long time ago in a galaxy yeah, far, far away yes, so, exactly I mean, you consider it's that the future it's, past yeah exactly in a different galaxy <laughs> yes in terms of special features though you know it's kind of underwhelming there's hmm. a, a behind the scenes feature about stepping into history looking at harrison ford's portrayal of um branch ricky and bozeman's chadwick bozeman's portrait of jackie robinson mm -hmm. which you know Two important guys, a very yeah. important story, so it's nice to sort of have something about that. Hopefully it's more interesting than the one in the movie. Yes. Um, there is one about baseball and what uh, baseball was like in the 1940s with the, you know, the toughness and the physicality hmm. that was played and sort of its um, transition to building stadium effects and the cast's baseball abilities. Interesting. And then there is a short on the legacy of the number 42 and, uh, you know, yes. former athletes and baseball players and stuff discuss the historical importance of, you know, breaking that color barrier hmm. and stuff like that, which is all good. But each of these are like 10 minutes long. And yeah. that's it. I mean, I guess you get a DVD, a Blu-ray, and an ultraviolet all together, but special features, no director's commentary. Pretty minimal for the a movie that broke the record for having the highest uh, box office opening weekend of a baseball movie. Really? Wow. Now, you would think that that's a really amazing thing and that it should be a lot I more don't noted. Think it However, the previous record holder, just take a wild guess. Just take a wild guess. Uh, what it was. Major League. No, you are just. It's way more recent. A little and big way, league. No, it's. You're not gonna get it. I just wanted you to try okay, it. Okay. So what is it? Bench warmers. 2006. I crap guess that Adam Sandler as, comedy. Yeah, yeah. The I mean, bench when you factor Adam Sandler. In but it that's makes the sense. saddest thing. Is every other baseball movie that has ever been made ever made less money in its opening weekend than the bench warmers did. It's Adam isn't Sandler, that sad? though. But isn't that the saddest thing you've you've heard? Almost more sa as sad as, you know, Pacific Rim losing to Grown Ups 2? <sighs> yeah, I mean... That just I, makes me sad. That makes me sad for baseball movies, too. That baseball movies, with all this not, classic love that they make, don't I just don't, don't see it as, like, a really big moneymaker in general. Like, I feel like they're all sort of modest openings with I, modest budgets and I know, but a modest it, which amount is, of money. Which is sad, because you would think that some of them might be... With how much, that, which, how much they're loved now, you would think that... There's a lot of good ones, too. Uh, as we talked about in yeah. episode whatever, yeah. a couple months back. <laughs> uh, episode... Edited here. Uh, <laughs> blah, 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 blah. Yeah. We're not going to edit that. Yeah, no. We're <laughs> too lazy for that. In a different direction, mm -hmm. though, also from this year, yep. also fairly similar time and release, mm -hmm. we're talking Evil Dead, the yes. remake of the Sam Raimi, Bruce Campbell yes, classic. This is the Fede Alvarez. Mm -hmm, right? Starring uh, Jane Levy from Suburb Suburgatory mm -hmm. and uh, Lou Terrapucci, Shiloh Fernandez. Mm -hmm. A hyper violent. <laughs> update of the original film with sort of a new spin with a lead female mm -hmm. heroine this yes. time instead of you know ash at one time uh, jillian jacobs up for the role 
Really? Yep. Wow. Lost okay. out to, I forget the name of the actress. She lost out to somebody else who was then replaced by the current one. Interesting. Yeah. She's much younger than Gilly and Jacob, yes. so that's a bit of a bummer. Yes. You know. But yes, hyperviolent, you're not joking about that, because according to reports in the press, 70,000 gallons of fake blood. Yeah, I forget if it was like the record holder or something yeah. like that. Yeah, 50,000 gallons for the final scene alone, and this compared to the 200 to 300 gallons used in the original film. Yeah, I mean, it's... it's <laughs> Literal it's, buckets it's of blood. It's very gory. It's, <laughs> I mean, it it it's a, a fun horror film, I guess, but it's mm. not fun in the way the original was like i feel like fundamentally when you take ash out it's just a different horror film and entirely. That's, that's the thing i don't get is like you know clearly the scares and the the violence and the way that they shot it were the things that were going to be interesting if you're willing to put that much thought and effort into something why not just make it an original property yeah that's what I, I mean agree, i know why, i know why sell, because but... that's what it's harder to sell yeah. but ugh but so you can either get it on blu-ray with an ultraviolet copy okay. or a dvd with no ultraviolet no full combo pack available. All right. Um, you do get an audio commentary with Jane Levy, Lou Taylor Pucci, who's interviewed on the MacGuffin site. You can check that out. Nice guy. Uh, Jessica Lucas, director Fede Alvarez, writer Rodo Soyoges. Um, there's also a featurette about Fede Alvarez talking about the process of working it as a director, you know, taking over somebody else's. Yeah. Yeah. You know. And he, I mean, he does a decent job as a director yeah and i think just... i mean the original idea for the pitch was not like let's remake evil dead as much as like i think one of the original pitches i read was that they wanted to make a movie that was just uh very very assaulting and disturbing to the viewer yeah like they wanted to make so they want so they wanted to just take that and it's like you have so many creative ideas yeah original property people yeah. come on um, there's also one about the rebooting Evil Dead with Rob Tappert, mm. Bruce Campbell, Fede Alvarez, um, Jane Lynch, etc. Surprisingly, mm. it looks like Sam Raimi not involved with that conversation. I very much would like to hear his perspective, but I know he was on board as a producer, so obviously, you know, he's yeah. cashing those checks at That's the bank. That's probably why. They were like, oh, what, what, why didn't you do it? Didn't want to. Why did you let it happen? Money. Yeah. There you go. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. They, they said, you know, they, this is sort of more what they wanted to do if they had the budget. It, but mm, okay. who knows and you know there's other ones like being Mia Jane Levy did a little you know video diary of her own mm. about it and stuff like that you know it's a decent amount of special features the film is pretty entertaining I don't know if I loved it quite as much as some people did but it's 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 enjoyable if you like really violent stuff it's good so blood porn yeah yeah um, I don't know how invested I am with the series going forward but they're definitely working on sequels really? so Ugh. oh yeah get ready for that great yep uh, moving into the realm of television, though, one that you yes. are very excited mm. to talk about, and that is Orphan Black, season yes. one. The story mm. of a woman who discovers she's not a lone. I was trying to come up with some sort nice. of pun with nice. clone uh -huh. there, but uh -huh. it's a not a yeah. clone. That's not yeah. at all the case. <laughs> yeah. She is a clone. She's very yes. much a clone. Yes. Um, uh, sees a woman who is identical looking to her commit suicide on a subway and then steals her identity and then through a because she's kind of a grifter the yeah. main character is kind of a grifter and then kind of finds out that there's others all played by the same actress yeah was it tatiana maslani i yeah, think that's I right i'm not sure how it's actually nope, that's pronounced right. that okay, sounds pretty no, good sweet yeah uh she's amazing absolutely fascinating in the show uh I, I will be really interested i'm hoping but probably not that there's a lot of special features on this dvd about how they make it and some behind the scenes yeah. stuff because uh they to shooting the scenes with her and her clones that she would do a scene with a body double mm. and then they would reshoot and repeat the scene with her playing the different role and a right. different double and etc cetera, etc cetera. you you would like that but there's not i mean obviously you can get it on blu-ray dvd there's no combo pack very few television productions get that so you're already out of the, on that um in terms of Special features, there's one about the creators discussing the uh, concept and um, several of the characters involved with the clone hmm. or mm -hmm. the storyline. That's only about like 15 minutes, though. Then there's a, a seven-minute chat between Tatiana and Chris Hardwick. Okay. And then Nerdist, there's... probably. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then there's like... A, like a handful of like one minute featurettes about like four of the main characters. There's no commentaries, no deleted scenes, nothing like that. Come on, BBC. Oh. What are you doing? Because it's a BBC America show. Yeah. It's like their se second or third you original know, project. I, 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 I enjoy the series. Mm -hmm. The problem for me is I feel like I would have felt the gravity of it more if it had come out like a decade ago. 
Like, at this point, like, do you really think cloning is that crazy of a notion? Like, it's sort of like, okay, it's happened. Am I that shocked that, like, if it were me and I ran into a clone, would I be that shocked at this point that there's someone else a clone? I, I would. I'd be surprised, but I'd be like, okay, yeah, they can probably do that at this point. Like, if they had done it, you know, a decade ago before it was like... But that's the inter one of the interesting things for me about the show. Is first off, the show constantly talks about elements of transhumanism and yeah. kind of that mentality in general. And realistically speaking, I don't think the show could have been made ten years ago. Yeah, you're probably and, right. I and mean, I mean, it might not have. And that's one of the things that's pretty impressive about it. It's very similar to uh, the later seasons of Fringe and that mentality, where it's almost so seamless of actors playing multiple roles that you almost forget it. In fact, the no, person who introduced me to the show to to the show I was just talking to the other day and I said it was amazing to me that one actress did all those roles and he was like what are you talking about because he literally did, he's like I'll have to rewatch it I didn't realize that was all the same actress wow I don't know how ignorant you would have to be to not realize it's the same person but alright um, especially since watching, they're discussing sorry, about sorry. the clones <laughs> but whatever you know they, yeah. they all are very acted differently yeah, some that's of them true. look very di drastic I can some see of them you... look very similar though <laughs> yeah uh, you know, it's it's a it's a good show. Don't get me mm -hmm. wrong, but I just I just it doesn't feel as quite like shocking as something like Fringe, mm. where Fringe is like talking about okay. stuff that's completely outside. I can of the agree, realm it's of not as shocking, but it is still very interesting. It's very good. Check it it's out. very good. Yes, we're ten episodes, out. first season. Yes, but sadly, not a lot of special features. Might yeah. want to rent that or get it on iTunes or something like that. That might be the more cost-effective route Scare to go with this. video. Yeah, totally. Maybe absolutely. Per yeah. Perhaps I would say <laughs> very perhaps. Yes. yes. Moving right along, we're going to go way back in time, mm -hmm. 50 years ago, and talk the Criterion yes. release of Lord of the Flies. Perhaps yes. one of the more influential um, films from growing up for me. Obviously, I was not around when this came out, <laughs> but I remember. Say, well, Spencer, I, you're I remember, a lot older than yeah, I remember. I remember reading the book and seeing mm -hmm. the movie in I don't know junior high, Probably. high school, something yeah, like that. Seems that. about right. Same here. Um, I mean, that whole phrase "kill the pig, slit his throat, mm -hmm. bash his head in" is so iconic and memorable. <laughs> Got to be one of the most memorable lines probably of That's the last 50 years. I mean, it's such a such definitely a in thing. literature. Yeah, it's definitely up there in literature. You know. Uh, Obviously, this is Criterion release, yes. so you're going to get tons is, and tons of special features. And it should be noted that we need lots of special features, because this film, originally, Peter Brook basically tossed the script away and encouraged his young cast to improvise. Yeah. They shot 60 hours wow. of footage that they then edited down to a four-hour movie that they then edited down to a two-hour movie wow. that they then cut after can to a 90-minute. That's crazy. <laughs> Not I mean, surprisingly, no screenplay credit given in this film. <laughs> it, it, it's interesting to think about, though, you know, in terms of, like, um, the fact that it is a largely child-driven mm -hmm. cast, so you're really dealing with kids, and so to be successful in having an entire kid cast is impressive. Jeez, yeah. You know, uh, it's it's a new 4K transfer supervised Ooh. by Gerald Fell, who I believe is the cinematographer on it. Okay. Um, file, Fell. Uh, there's an audio commentary featuring Peter Brook and more. God, I audio recording. I just have to say about all the crappy Seriously. films. <laughs> uh, there's uh, audio recordings of William Golding, who wrote the original okay. novel, Lord nice. of the Flies. You know, you have a deleted scene with a uh, commentary from Golding. Uh, interview with Brooke from 2008, hmm. excerpts from Files, documentary The Empty Space, which, to be clear, is not related to this okay. movie. Um, there's uh, you know, all sorts of uh, collection of behind-the-scenes materials, hmm. a new interview with Files. So it's just loaded down. Criterion with, loaded? Yeah. Yeah. So... Uh, this is also the first time they've released it, so both the DVD and oh. the Blu-ray are brand new to their collection. Very cool. So it's not just a Blu-ray bump, which is cool. I always like that. Yeah. So you know, very... they're having their Criterion sale going on. Yeah, right? yeah, exactly. So it's Between that and Steam. Everybody out there is just wasting their whole money. Yeah, but you know, classic, uh, solid film, solid release, mm -hmm. good way to end. The week, yes. of July sixteenth. So yes, that brings us to the end of this week. You know, you can always find us on MacGuffin. That's mm -hmm. MacGuff mm -hmm. Twitter.com slash MacGuffinCast. Facebook.com slash MacGuffin Podcast. Phone number 323-761-9842. We're on iTunes. We're on Blip.tv. Miro, Roku. Check in and get glue. Get some stickers, sticky badges. Leave us some stars on iTunes and Please some do. thumbs on YouTube. Comments as well there. We'll hit you back and uh, see you next time.